So how did your mage learn his arts? Is it an innate, inborn magical talent that just fully formed grew from him? Is he somebody's apprentice and he learned from his mentor? Is he perhaps a magical creature that just instinctively knows how to do all of these things? Or maybe he went to school. Today, I would like to take a look at how to build a magic school and what options the various models of magical school give you from a world building and plot perspective. Welcome to another episode of Just In Time Worlds with your host, Marie Mullaney. If you have not yet done so, please do hit the subscribe button down below and let's get cracking with today's episode. A magic school is definitely not the only way that a wizard can learn his arts. A wizard can learn his arts from a master, so it can be a master-apprentice relationship or a mentorship relationship. A wizard can learn their arts in a self-taught manner. A wizard can be taught by a spirit or by a magical creature in a different kind of mentorship relationship. So there's all manner of ways in which you can teach wizardry that doesn't involve a school. But having a magical school does offer you certain advantages that you can combine with the other methods. Just because you have a magical school doesn't mean that that's where your characters learn their specific magics. But it does give you access to certain things. Why would you have a magical school? Let's talk about some in-world reasons why magical schools would grow into existence. Why did normal schools start to exist? Why did university institutes like Oxford go back a thousand years? Because they provide a place where scholars can research, where scholars can combine their knowledge and further their craft. So if your magic system is something that lends itself to a harder magic system, right? it's something that can be researched, then having a magic school does help for those scholar-type characters who want to try and understand the world around them. Bear in mind that in our world, that translated to people who studied science. In your world, that might be people who study the arts of magic. Even if your magic system is soft, you might have these kinds of schools, not per se to study magic, but to study things like mathematics and engineering as they did in our world. And then as a happenstance could also include some elements of magic as they explore the world around them and discover some attributes of the magical system of your world. So research is definitely a driving force behind magical schools. It is, I think, well illustrated in Earthsea, the arc mages, the nine most powerful mages run the magical school. They also do their own research as well as teaching magic to people who are sent to the school in Roke. Now, why would people like that, why would scholars like that choose to also teach? So there are two reasons. The one is that people like that often feel the responsibility of educating the next generation. Some of my favorite memories from university is the lectures that I received from the professors who truly have a love for teaching as well as research. They are obviously published in their field. They are people who love their field and research it, but they also enjoy teaching the next generation. They contribute to knowledge by spreading it. So certainly there will be some of those people who will drive the setup of schools and the creation of teaching institutes. The second reason for teaching the next generation in such a research style school is slightly more mundane and that is that professors got to eat. And one of the ways that you can eat is by having rich students who take classes from you and therefore pay you for your time in teaching them. Examples of this besides Roke from Earthsea is the university in King Killer Chronicles, where Koveth goes. 
There, you can study anything you like as long as you pay your tuition fees. This kind of research-based school quite often does involve some kind of fee. There would normally be scholarships or something like that for exceptional students, as there are in our world today. It is also quite common for this kind of school to be tied to some kind of power. So in Voldemort, as an example, you have these kinds of schools. You've got the Blue Moon School, the Fireflower School, the Leveron School, the Red River School, the White Wind School, etc., etc. Now, each school also maintains a reservoir of power. And if you are a master of the school, you are given keys to the reservoir of power and you can draw from it whenever you need to work with it. And one of the ways in which students pay for their tuition is every day they pour some of their own power into that reservoir of power, thus keeping it topped up. So you could also have such a structure where students give some of their power on a daily basis as recompense for their teaching, where it becomes not just a monetary trans transaction, but also a power transaction. So that's research and power, which ties into university. It also ties into the kind of martial arts school that you quite often see in current day martial arts. So you learn this style of kung fu or that style of karate from this kind of master or a new school is started that teaches you this kind of martial arts. That kind of school based where it's different techniques depending on which master you go to and which school you belong to and where you have this inter-school rivalry, you can also compare to the Voldemort schools. And of course, there are so many anime examples. I would be here all day if I tried to list them. This is the most common type of school that, there, that is used in anime. So you can have a magic school based around research. You can have a magic school tied to power. You can have a magic school tied to different techniques. There is also one more. Majors are a destabilizing political influence, as I have said before. If there is a segment of your population that innately wields a power that sets them apart from the rest of the population, they are politically destabilizing. A mage school offers control. A mage school enables you to distribute your pop propaganda to the new mages as they start learning their craft. They also learn the proper ethical way to behave according to your society. If they show signs of being non-ethical, they can be weeded out and their powers removed or killed depending on how your magic system works exactly. The rulers of your society can, ma can maintain control over the bulk of the majors by maintaining control over the school. This is the principle of Trudy Canavan's school in the Black Magician trilogy. All mages have to go to the mage guild for their education. They all swear oaths of allegiance to their rulers. If you choose not to learn from the guild, they will bind your powers and make you unable to cast magic. So that kind of control is very typical in societies where magic is common enough to be that kind of destabilizing force. Those are your four primary reasons in world for having a school. But there are a couple of other considerations when you're setting up a school that you should think about them. Definitely you need to consider who pays for the school. The professors need to live. The staff needs to live. The grounds of the school needs to be maintained. There's a lot of maintenance and money that needs to go into the school. Now, each of your different reasons for starting the school will change the way that the school is financed. If your school is research-based or power-based, it is quite likely that it is run like a private school and there are people who pay tuition. It is also quite possible in that case that they have an extensive scholarship program and that they try and attract the best kind of majors 
and the best kind of young majors to their school quite early on through scholarship programs and whatnot. Most likely where there are multiple competing schools that are trying to attract new mage scholars and they will do that by means of scholarships or benefits that you get from the school. So your research schools and your power schools quite commonly should charge tuition. Your different technique schools might be based around a single powerful individual that funds the whole school and uses it as a vehicle for their propaganda and their personal point of view. So this starts shading into your control. So the school might be free or it might be partially tuition, so some students pay tuition, but the majority of it might come from private funds and then the school is used for private purposes. In the case of a control school, so the school is being used as control, it is highly unlikely that the students pay anything. The funding probably comes from the organization that institutes the control. So the school is funded by the king if it's a state school, or the school is funded by some other shadowy organization that takes control of the majors. The school is funded by the guild to which all majors eventually belong. Whatever the case is, that organization that exercises the control, they'll be the ones paying the bills. Maybe the school is funded by the church because all majors belong to the church. That could be a very interesting mechanic where it's your religion funding the education in order to keep control of what young majors are taught and what knowledge they go out into the world with so that they don't start interfering with the holy message and the you know miracles that priests cast. Some other elements to consider in terms of your school. What age do people go to the school as? If you are writing a young adult, you might want to start them as young as 11, as is the case in Hogwarts of Harry Potter. But if you're writing a more mature adult fantasy, like the King Killer Chronicles, you might want to do it as you can be there at any age as long as you're paying your tuition, much like our universities today. To a large extent, it is also dependent on why your school has started. If it's a control-based organization, it is much more likely that they try and catch majors young. So if this society is about controlling magic, this school is about controlling magic, they're going to try and catch them as young as possible. If it's about research and power, they're going to try and attract them at the point where they'll actually start being useful immediately. And if it's about technique, they're going to try and attract the most loyal followers. Another thing that you might want to think about in your school is academic politics, politics between the professors. It is very common in our world and it definitely would exist in a magical school. In Ursula Le Guin's Earthsea on Roke, you have the dispute between the master of illusion and the summoner, especially when the master of illusion starts teaching our boy Ged about the very advanced magic that eventually gets him into trouble and the master summoner doesn't want to have anything to do with that. So definitely think about things like academic politics and how all of that filters into your school. And then one other thing that I want to talk about that I don't see often discussed is evil schools. So by evil schools, what I mean is schools where what you learn turns you into a bad person. It could turn you into an assassin. It could turn you into a necromancer, anything like that. This could be the kind of school where you don't go to voluntarily. You get kidnapped and taken to that school and then you don't have any rights. You are essentially gaslighted, broken down and rebuilt as a person with loyalty to the school embedded in you. So it's kind of a building on that control mechanism, but taking it to the furthest part. So maybe you're kidnapped or maybe you have slavery in your world and the school buys slaves, buy child slaves, and then breaks them down and builds them up in this new image. This is a great way to build that element of assassin magic into your world or to build necromancy 
into your world. If you want to have those darker aspects in a school, it would be a good place to say, okay, people don't come to the school voluntarily. People don't get sent here. They get kidnapped here. And then you can tell an amazing story from the perspective of a character who goes there to that school, or maybe from the perspective of a character who graduates from that school and now tries to interact with the world around them while at the same time being loyal to the secretive dark school that, you know, sits there in the back of their mind. And that is my high-level thoughts on magic schools and how to incorporate them into my world. If you enjoyed this video, you will probably enjoy my video on assassins or my video on secret organizations. So do check those out. And I will see you soon for another video on Just In Time World.